Our guest in this segment is Tara Rogers. We had Tara on the program a couple of months ago. She tragically lost her daughter at a young age, and since that time has thrown so much of her energy and be, on behalf of doing work for the Epilepsy Foundation. Tara, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Great to have you back with us. Thank you. You brought with us your book. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can hold that uh, a second there and put it up and tell us about it a little bit. Um, so I wrote the book of Cassie's story. Mm -hmm. um, it basically starts um, Cassie at a young age, born all through life, how she was, and then how the seizures changed her. Um, doctor's appointments are on there. Um, results that day is actually on there mm -hmm. in two different versions because my daughter-in-law and I found her. Um, so there's some things in there that you might not want a young child to read, but it's a lot of important information with seizures, um, with epilepsy, and just trying to get the awareness out there. What did you know about seizures before your daughter started having those? And, and by the way, your daughter came about these later in life. It wasn't something that was happening when yeah. she was two years old. This was the first one was age 19, if I remember? No. First one was 23. 23, okay. Yeah, she got the COVID vaccine in July and August. Um, that December, she started having seizures. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, she was healthy her whole life, never had any issues. Um, we went through tons of EEGs, couldn't find anything, and epilepsy was never mentioned. It was Dr. Young, which is the autopsy doctor, that mentioned it was epilepsy. And the seizures were separate from the epilepsy? Seizures or part are part of? It's part of, yeah. It's part of um, the epilepsy. Um, so Dr. Young is the autopsy doctor that explained to me that if you don't have a tumor, if you don't have a head trauma, and if you've not had a stroke, seizures, once you have a second seizure, it's considered epilepsy. And you have, since your daughter's passing, have you been doing fundraising to raise money, and you yes. have another fundraiser coming up, what will you be doing? Uh, so we just had our third one last night, um, May 18th, we have another one. Mm -hmm. um, you can go on the foundation page, and then it will give you all the information. Um, what that is is a biker poker run on May 18th. It'll start at the fairgrounds. We're going to have food vendors there. I'll have the book there to sell other things um, to sell to raise money. All that money goes towards her Epilepsy Foundation. And what's the name of her foundation? The Epilepsy Field of Sunflower Foundation in memory of Cassie Nicole Slevin. And what do you do with the funds that are raised by the foundation? It all goes for research. Um, epilepsy is uh, a lot more difficult than people understand or believe. Um, the awareness just isn't there. One of the main things that I have found out doing all my research is when you have a seizure, it's an electric, electric shock that goes through your brain. Once that seizure stops, there's no damage. There's no trace of it. So that was one of the reasons why they couldn't find out that she had epilepsy in the beginning. Um, I believe her medicine wasn't correct or strong enough for what she had. Um, and it unfortunately took her before we got everything diagnosed. How long from the first time she had a seizure, or, or maybe was even aware of having epilepsy until that last day when you found her? Um, a year and a half. And it wasn't, we didn't even know the last day. It was, uh, we were in the funeral home. So it was, I found out the day we were at her service that it was epilepsy that took her. We didn't even know for sure until then. Um, and then nine months later, I finally got the courage to call and talk to the epilep to the doctor, and uh, that did the autopsy. And he said all of her organs were perfect. There was, you know, she had no other issues. He couldn't find any damage anywhere. Nothing. It was just the fact that she had epilepsy. Bill. Yeah, uh, Tara. Uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, is epilepsy a catch-all term for a lot of different manifestations? It could be. Okay. Yeah, it, there, the research is just ongoing. Um, I've um, talked to another foundation, the Danny Did Foundation. Um, Danny was diagnosed with epilepsy, and he had the grand mal seizure, and he died at the age of four. Okay. Um, four. 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 So what, the, if, the difference then between something called a seizure disorder and epilepsy is is epilepsy the big umbrella that describes if you have a seizure disorder or yeah it epilepsy is basically from my understanding the fancy word for 
seizures that are unexplained. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I said, uh, once you have your second seizure, if there's if there's no trace of those three main things, uh, the strokes, the brain dam, or the tumors, or um, a blunt trauma to your head, if you've not had any of those, which she never had, and she had uh, the seizure that took her, was her sixth seizure that we know of. Um, I do believe uh, once talking to people and learning everything, I believe she was having absent seizures as well. I'm what, sorry, what type of seizures? An absent seizure. That means what? So it do, it means that you don't go down, you don't drop, you don't go into the full convulsions and the shaking and everything. Um, we could just be sitting here having a conversation, and if she was here with us, she could just kind of blank stare into space, and that's her brain having a seizure. Uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned a couple of things. One, that no one had diagnosed as epilepsy, and second thing, by definition, if you have two or more seizures, it is it is called epilepsy. Yes. Uh, would there, if if the doctors had recognized uh, of epilepsy, is there a different treatment program they would have been, uh, they would have followed? There's not really a treatment for it other than medication for seizures. Um, but that's the thing. Like, if they don't catch it on an EEG, there's so many different kinds. There's 40 types of epilepsy out there. Um, could be more. We don't know at this point. Um, but if they don't catch it on an EEG to see what the brain does while having the seizure, there's no way for them to know for sure. There's um, ones that are hereditary. But... And because we never caught it on an EEG, she did a tilt table test EEG, a 24 hour and a three day EEG and never once had a seizure. Nothing ever showed up. So it, to this day, we will never know what kind of epilepsy she had. And I think that's probably, I, I would say from your perspective, has to be the one of the biggest frustrations because yeah. you just don't. No, I know people, I can remember my mother late in life, relatively late in life, having one seizure, then a second, and then not being able to drive. She was probably in her 60s at the time, and that was the biggest, but they were never able to explain. And then she never had another one after the second one. So it's just such a mystery the whole yeah. thing is just mysterious so yeah with the fact it's a mystery and the fact that there's no real persistence uh, what is the what's the solution uh, obviously more research uh, but yeah. as far as medication uh, I'm, what I what I know about epilepsy, I've learned in the last couple of so minutes talking with you, uh, but the medication is so directed toward one type of seizure. How would you how would you treat it with this state of the knowledge that we have today? That's just it. There's that's where the problem lies because there's not enough research there to know enough about it. Um, with it being, I mean, a person would basically have to walk around without medication to and have a seizure to do that. When she was in the hospital, they even did the light test, you know, because the the blinking light causes, bright lights cause seizures. It wouldn't come about. She wasn't on medication, but she was only on med. She stopped medication the day before we went in and then the three days that we were in. So I feel like that wasn't enough time for the medication to really be out of her system to be able to do that. Um, We had went April or yeah, April 6th, we had an appointment with the doctor and I explained to him, she would send me everything. She would say, mom, talk to mom, talk to mom. I give her my note, you know, I tell her everything because she couldn't remember things. Um, So I would tell them and she was really, you know, she wasn't herself. She was moody. She was tired. She was getting lightheaded. She was getting headaches. She was getting all these things. And the two seizures that she was awake for, that's how she remembered feeling. So she was afraid she was gonna have the seizure even being on the medication. Um, And he upped her medication. Other than that, I'm not sure that he could really do anything more. A head CT maybe, a head scan, I don't know. Not unfortunately, I'm not a neurologist, but prior to this, I didn't know any of that. Should the doctor have mentioned that it was epilepsy or a possibility? Yeah, we, we saw three doctors and then the neurologist and no one once 
mention that word. But reading in the doctor's notes that I have now, he mentions it all over the place. In the notes, but never to you. Never to me. And I was at, I took her to every single appointment. I was the go-to. I was the one who had, to this day, I still have all the notes in my phone. He never once mentioned it. And he went to school, and his main study was epilepsy. Was it mentioned to your daughter, who was of legal age? No, I was always with her. She was never in a room without me with her. Always, even um, in the hospital when she did the three days stay at the hospital, my mom, my her dad, my ex husband, and myself, we were all always in there, mm -hmm. and it was never mentioned. So I would have never known, you know. I mean, because the like the research isn't there, the knowledge isn't there, the awareness isn't there. So that's one of the things that I'm trying to make so. You have to tell tell parents what you want them to know that they otherwise might not even be aware of push forward go get the go get a second opinion um as a parent you have that instinct when something's wrong with your child and we fought we fought as hard as we could uh, we were going to do more testing in june i was hopefully going to get into a second opinion but we never got that time i had a we had an appointment on may 10th with the family doctor um, because she was 23 years old she was afraid to live her life um so she was getting depressed so you know it was we wanted to go get try to get medication for that we never made it to that appointment unfortunately she died may 1st um but as a parent fight for your child get them to you know the better the better hospitals so the hospitals around here don't have the research don't have the knowledge they don't have what they need. You need to push. You need to get to a, to someone who deals with it. There's better hospitals around here that actually deal with epilepsy and seizures and things like that. More specialized. Yeah. Yes. You're, you're obviously very disappointed. I think you have uh, reasons to be that you were not told it could be epilepsy. Yes. But do you think the fact you were not told in any way impacted or affected the treatment that she was receiving? Yes, I do. do. Okay. I do. Um, speaking with Dr. Young, the autopsy doctor, um, he believes that she wasn't on the correct or the correct amount of medication. So had she been on the correct medicine and a higher dosage, we, I may not be here. Yeah. Tara, we, we are uh, running low on time. I don't make sure you get your fundraiser in May uh, publicized again if you want to talk about that. Okay, so May 18th, um, you can get on the, the page, you can contact me, uh, get a hold of Rob. He can give my information to anyone who's interested. It's a biker poker run. We will have food vendors um, at the VFW picnic grounds. We'll be selling the book, other things that we have there, 50-50 um, raffles, all kinds of stuff going on there. All that money will go to the foundation for research. And epilepsy is one of the foundations that their money actually does go to the research. It doesn't go to paying salaries, um, which I dug into detail on that because I didn't want to do all this work and raise all this money to pay someone's salary. How did your fundraiser go last night? It went really well. What did um, you folks do? Um, we went to Dairy Queen on Winchester Avenue, which she was a manager there for five years. Your well, daughter? Yes. Um, because she wasn't diagnosed with epilepsy, so she was living, you know, as normal of a life as she could. Um, so we did a spirit night there and 10% of that goes towards the, her foundation. Um, but we had people coming through the drive through seeing things and giving us money. So we had a donation thing and all that money will go. So we raised uh, 500 in cash, people just coming through, coming in, eating, giving us money. And then um, I think almost $300 was donated from Dairy Queen. Very nice. Uh, you might want to think about doing that Dairy Queen fundraiser on a warmer day. We are going to do the next one on July 9th, there which you is <laughs> two days two days after her birthday. So, uh, Tara, as always, uh, you're welcome on the program when you're doing fundraisers. We love to promote the cause. Uh, it's uh, just heartbreaking to hear what your family has gone through, and we're I so sorry for that. your loss. I appreciate that. So her book will be available May 1st, which is the day that she passed. Um, it, I will have copies, but it will also be sold on Amazon as well. Very good. 
Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks, Thank you. 957, a final minute of our program next. Oh,